this rose water on it. And now I'm gonna take my big brush. I'm gonna put white paint on one side of it. I'm gonna take blue paint and put it on the other side. Again, this is with my big brush. Blue paint on one side, white paint on the other. And then I'm just gonna streak on a sky to about there, okay? Just gonna go back and forth. And I want this to be streaky. I want there to be a lot of white and blue streaks. A wispy sky, a wispy sky doesn't look blended perfectly. Sometimes you don't have any clouds in the sky. In this painting, there are light, wispy clouds. So I'm going to leave those streaks in. Streaks of blue and white. Since you guys were so patient with my setup, if you were here in my class, I'd give y'all a free drink. So, <laughs> when we reopen, you come in, hit me up, okay? Remind me when you see me. All right, I can't wait to reopen. I miss you guys so much. All right, so nice and streaky. A little blue, a little white, and you can make the sides and the top a little bit darker and you can paint the sides too. Paint the sides of the canvas, paint the top of the canvas. And I like to make my sides a little darker because the focal point's here, here. And when you make the sides a little darker, then people can, uh, their eyes know where to go. The darker, darker parts are like arrows. So everyone can hear me okay, right? Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, awesome. It's a little nerve-wracking when your phone dies and <laughs> you're about to go on a Saturday night class. Sorry. You guys rock. My son rocks. All righty. So nice and streaky, nice and streaky. If your canvas is starting to dry out, just pop your brush in the water a little bit and go back and forth some more. All right, while you're doing that, I'm gonna tell those folks who are new to Zoom just a little bit about Zoom. And those of you who have been with me before, you can just tune out for a bit. Basically, if you want to chat, then you can go to chat. I'm alone here, so I'm not gonna be looking at it too often, but you're welcome to chat with other people on, on Zoom that have their name listed there or your, uh, Welcome to ask me questions and on the breaks, I'll try to answer those questions. Another thing that you can do is depending on your device, you either have a, well, it depends. I'm on a PC. If you're on a Mac or if you're on an iPhone or iPad, your icons, your little symbols will be somewhere else probably. But when I move my mouse and hover up to the, I move my mouse to the upper right side of my screen and hover, I get something that's a speaker view, and if I click speaker view, then my face shows up with a painting. If you choose gallery view, you're gonna see everyone else, okay? I can also come in here and I'm gonna spotlight my video so you see it up close, okay? You can unmute yourself at any time to ask a question. That's actually a better way to ask me a question because that way I don't have to keep watching chat. Um, you can ask me a question, just unmute yourself, and then when you're finished asking your question, put your mute back on, okay? We are videotaping all of our classes. There's a lot of them on YouTube now. I've been loading them for a week. Uh, so we're videotaping all of our 
I guess you don't call it taping anymore. We're recording all of our uh, classes um, in June. And if you want to do another one, you can just go to YouTube. They're right there and they're going to stay there forever. Okay. So hopefully I've given you enough time to, to uh, streak out your background. Can someone who's got their camera on give me a thumbs up if, if you think we're ready to go on for perfect. I'm going to go on to clouds. Nice. Happy little clouds. Speaking of happy little clouds, I'm a certified Bob Ross instructor. This is not a Bob Ross painting. Uh, Bob Ross paintings are done in oil. And when we get started again, I hope you'll join me for a certified Bob Ross painting. Those are six hours long in person, and, uh, but they're a ton of fun. So I hope you'll join me for that. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to make happy clouds, okay? I'm gonna take my medium brush. This is my medium brush. I'm gonna take my medium brush and I'm gonna put it in the white paint. And I'm gonna make several clouds, okay? Several clouds. I'm gonna move my example a little closer so you can see it. Right here next to it. All right. So I'm gonna start with one up here and I'm going to put my white brush, white paint on, and I'm gonna circle. And if you think of this like a pile of melting vanilla ice cream, that's the shape we want. Like it's melting on the sidewalk or mashed potatoes, something like that. You want it flatter on the bottom, rounder and puffier at the top. The reason for that is that in a sky, the wind is uh, blowing across the earth and it catches the bottom of those clouds and flattens them out a bit, makes them smoother. But on top, there's less air and less wind, so they stay fluffier. Um, we had a scientist in here one time and he was explaining it to me with the atmospheric pressure. And, I, don't know, I don't remember exactly, but just, just trust me on this one. Every sky has different clouds, but this is kind of a typical one. All right. And then when you paint another cloud, you can paint it only halfway onto the painting. And that looks more realistic than if you push all of your clouds to the middle. Okay, then it looks like you really took a snapshot of a, of a sky. And you can pull these bottoms out a little bit. And you can, you know, zig, zaggy, wiggle them out. And that, that looks pretty natural too. Okay, and anyway. Just gonna zigzag, and that adds some wispiness to your clouds. I'm gonna keep going. This painting has oh, about five clouds, something like that. So remember, your clouds can start off the painting. Like this one would be like right up here. Okay, and then wisp it out. Wisp it out. Oh, I think I'll do another one here. I'm just turning and twisting and then I fill it in. And it's just in the shape of melting ice cream on the sidewalk next to a store at Costco. All right, nice. I used to say that it was a snail shape and then I had a whole class once that painted snails in their skies. And then I went, no, that's not a good, good way to describe this process. But hopefully this is looking a little bit like clouds. And you can put more little baby clouds or different shapes and whisk them out. You've got some uh, routine kind of shapes there. Not routine, standard, like typical clouds. So if you put in these other kinds, you know, people will know those are clouds because you've got a few that look really standard, right? And you've got the wisps behind there. What you don't want to do with clouds is I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you down here in blue. You don't want this. You don't want cotton balls, okay? There is some art on the way to the airport that has clouds in that shape, but that's cartoony. That looks like South Park, and that's awesome if you're painting a cartoon, but if you want real clouds, they're in this kind of shape usually. Um, at least a few to, so that people know those are clouds. Now, what I also want you to do, make a little, pile of 
a little about three quarters white and just this is just a tiny bit and a just a hair of blue just the tiniest amount of blue and what i'm going for is the palest palest blue i can i can make and i just need about a dime size of it i'm going to pick that up and then i'm going to put that on the underside of the clouds it should just look slightly darker than the underside of the cloud And if anyone wants to unmute themselves and tell me why I would do that, I would love some guesses, especially from the kids. Anyone know why I would do that? Anyone want to unmute themselves and tell me why I would make the bottoms of the clouds a little more blue? No, no brave souls out there, huh? All right, I'll just tell you then. It's because the sun, on a sunny day, the sun is shining from the top. And so the, the tops of the clouds stay fluffy and white and crisp, bright white from the, they're being kissed by the sun. The bottom of the clouds aren't getting that sun because the top's blocking it, right? And so then you get shadow. You get shadow below the clouds. So next time you're out looking at clouds, see what I mean? There's usually shadows below each cloud. Just pull out your shadows. Just pull out your shadows. Now, this is not perfect. I'm not outlining it. I'm just being messy and sloppy and just kind of put a little more, but almost like you're putting a little blue cloud underneath one of your clouds. When I teach my boss at Ross classes, we do that with a fan brush. I really do hope some of you will join me the next time I do a Bob Ross class in person. I'm actually going to do some of those online, but I think I'm going to have to charge because um, in person, there's six hours online, they'll probably be about three, maybe four. Um, and those require oil paint. So really it's satisfying. You have to have oil paint brushes too. All right, so I've got some blue shadows underneath my clouds. And it's hard for me to step away 15 feet because right in behind me is a computer, but I can look on yours on the screen and see what I have. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. This one needs to be broken up a little bit, maybe. All right, nice. How's it going? How are my, my people up on top that are, uh, I can see painting? Can you give me a thumbs up if this is making sense? It's awesome, yay, thank you. Nice. Now remember, this was just a demonstration. We're not painting a powder puff cloud down here. Hi, Bob. I'm going to give you a few minutes to work on your clouds and your shadow, and I'm going to pour myself a glass of wine. And then we'll start again in a few minutes. Cheers to you.
I'll give you probably three more minutes to touch upon your background and your clouds. We're not going to obsess about our clouds. We're going to enjoy painting them, but not worry too much. I don't have to be perfect. In fact, perfect clouds go up my clouds. All right, everyone, however your skies are, don't worry. Put your brushes in the water, give them a, give your brushes a cleaning, and we'll go on. You don't have to clean them perfectly. We're gonna be using similar colors in our mountains, but uh, just give them a swish. I'm gonna to continue to use my medium brush Actually, you know what? I just looked. Let's do the bottom bottom before our mountains. Um, I don't know. Can I take a poll? All right. Who wants to do mountains first and who wants to do the bottoms first? Bottom. Shouldn't we do the mountains first because then the bottom kind of goes over the mountains. Maybe. Mountains. Mountains. All right, that poll thing's taking too long. Mountains. Mountains. All right, I hear mountains. Uh, yeah. all right, ready? All right, so take your medium brush and put it in straight white. Straight white, straight white. These are snowy Colorado mountains. All right, now about mountains. Let me show you how not to do mountains. Don't do what I do, just watch what I, I'm doing and don't do it, okay? Don't do this, okay? See how uniform those are? That's Charlie Brown's shirt, all right? If you're old enough to remember Charlie Brown, that's his shirt. Or it's South Park. It's cartoony, it's not real. Real mountains aren't perfect triangles. So now for the bottoms, they're not perfect triangles, they're not teepees. They, each one is different, has its own personality, just like people. Some are tall, some are short, some are fat, some are thin. Some are bumpy, some are smooth. So we need to make each one different. So I can, start with this one and I can make that one a little taller than the rest and I can make this one go off to the side a little bit in a believable way 
This one, I like how it's going off the side. So it looks like I have a snapshot, just like I did with the clouds off the side. I kind of like that, okay? But I don't want two mountains the same height. And this one, it's gonna have a double peak, okay? So make each one of your mountains a little different from the rest, okay? Maybe this one's also tall over here. It should be different heights, just think like people. Different heights, different, um, different heights, different widths. Some are bumpy, some are smooth, some are steep. Maybe this one's really steep. The rest aren't. So just make your mountains not uniform. And each one of these valleys in between should not be at the exact same top. This one's high, this one's low. This one's even lower. So I'll give you a minute to do that. I would recommend outlining them first and then um, turn my hand back on. Outline them first. And then fill them in. And when you're doing it, here's another tip. Make your butt, your brush wiggle. Make those mountains bumpy. Because real mountains, we have the Rocky Mountains. They're bumpy. They're bumpy, guys. They don't have any straight sides. Nothing straight about it. Make it bumpy. Wiggle your brush. Now my mountains are more realistic and my clouds are more realistic. So far, so good. While you're doing that, you're filling in your mountains. I'm gonna go show you a Bob Ross painting. I'll be right back. This is my Bob Ross painting. I painted this one, Bob didn't. This is typical of what we do in our class, our Bob Ross class. But the reason I'm showing it to you is I want you to see that if you were to look at this, probably what you would think is, oh, those mountains are white. Because your brain thinks of snow as white. But really, it's not white. Really, on this side, I have white and I put in the teeny tiniest, just ever so small amount of red in it to make it the palest pink you can find. And on this side, I put blue in it. And it's really like baby booty blue. And then it's over a dark background. So there's really three colors in those mountains and that's what makes them pop. Now this is oil painting, but we're gonna do something kind of similar with acrylic. I just wanted to show you that when you look at a mountain that's snowy, your eyes, your brain says, oh, it's white. And then when you really learn to look at it, there's lots of different colors in it. So hold, hold that thought. All right. Now this is our acrylic sample, okay? And again, this side has the smallest amount of pink. Not sure if you can see these highlights there's the smallest amount of pink in there. Don't add it yet, because I'm gonna tell you how, okay? And then the other side, this has gray and a little bit of blue in it. I'm gonna tell you how to mix those. Don't mix them yet. But I just wanted you to see that when you're making a mountain, each side has to be slightly different colors or it won't pop out. All right. So we've had cloud 101, we've had mountain 101. We're gonna have tree 101, we're gonna have columbine 101, fun night. All right. 
So clean my brush a little bit. It doesn't need to be good because I'm gonna use white. Now, remember that pile, that light blue that we had? I'm just gonna scoop a little bit of white in it. It's probably dry by now, but I just want that really pale, 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 pale white blue. And then I'm gonna take a speck of black. And when I say speck, what I mean by that is it's so small. It's like an ant went through your backyard in April and stepped in mud. And the amount of black paint you want is what's on the, an ant's foot. Just the tiniest amount. A flea, a sesame seed. Just a little bit. We're going to make that just slightly gray. Black goes a long way in these colors. So the tiniest amount of black with the tiniest amount of blue and then white. So you have a gray blue. That's what we're going for. A very, very pale, mostly white, gray blue. That's going to be our shadow side. Okay. It's, it's a gray blue, very, very pale. Okay. Now on my mountains, each side is either going to be in the shadows or the light. And I don't know where the light's coming from, except I think about it and go, oh, the clouds are brighter at the top. So the, the sun is coming from the top. And then I think, is it coming from, is it brighter in any one direction? Not really, but maybe a little brighter in this direction. So if that's the case, actually it looks a little brighter in, yeah, this direction. If that's the case, then the other side of my mountain, the right side is gonna be my shadow side. It doesn't matter which one you pick, just pick one. So if I'm picking the right side of my mountains or the shadow side, every mountain has to be shadowed on the right side, okay? Whatever side you pick, stick with it on all the mountains. So here's an example, and I'm just gonna wiggle on a little of this gray paint all the way down on one side. I didn't put it here because there's another mountain there, and this one's going to be in front. I'm just taking a little bit of that gray paint, and I'm only using, doing it on the right side of each mountain. This one's going to be the right side. Now, I'm making mine a little darker because I wanted you to see it. You don't have to have your gray that dark, but I really wanted you to see what I'm doing. Okay, and so on the right, always go on the right always the right and and don't make it a perfect line you want that wiggle wiggle you want that harry potter scar there you want this line to be wiggly messy not uniform okay all right good like i said that's darker than you might want to do it but i wanted you to see it all right good now then you clean your brush So notice only the whites, the right side of each mountain has that shadow on it. That's my shadow side. Now I cleaned my medium brush. I know you're probably still working on your shadows, but I'll just tell you, for those who are ready, I'm gonna take the smallest amount of red paint on my brush. This amount, oops, there we go, this amount is so small, it's like that ant cut his foot running through my backyard. I can't even see red paint on there. And his foot was bleeding. An ant. That's how much red paint I want on there. So light, this is gonna be lighter pink than the other side was blue. It's so light you can barely tell that it's pink. If you have cotton candy or Pepto Bismol, too much, too much. It's so faint you won't even know when you look at it, except it'll make your mountains pop. So can you see my paint? You can't even tell. This area has pink. The palest, palest, palest pink you can make. If you put in too much red already, then you can scoop out what you don't want, scoop out most of it, put it on a napkin, and then start again. All right, so this is so pale, you can barely tell it's pink. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to wiggle down the other side. And I don't have to fill in every spot. In fact, it's better if you don't. And you can't even tell. 
you can just tell this is a slightly different, looks brighter than this. That's the idea. We want the sun to look like it's on this. That's why when you add the teeny tiniest amount of paint, it looks just like a bright white. Isn't that weird? Okay, you can tell it's there. It's not here. This one's really sticking out. All right. Now, if you did, if you make Pepto Bismol, if it's too pink, put it on, let it dry, and then come back over it later with the white and just leave it choppy. We don't want everything covered. We want lots of chop. And what I mean by chop is like areas that aren't filled in because a little bit of that blue background in there is a very big thing. All right. So now my mountains look a little more 3D, don't you think? I think so. It's kind of fun um, when I learned about that. You can even, with your small brush, you can even put a tiny bit of that on top with a very tip. I mean like lace on top of your clouds and it makes those pop a little bit too. But don't spend any time doing that. We're not gonna worry about that. But this is a quick little tip where the sun is kissing it. And I would have thought, somebody asked me before I saw Bob Ross do that, if I would have thought that he had a color, I would have guessed yellow, right? Like sunlight, but no, it's got little pink. I don't know why, but it just makes it pop. And it's the slightest amount. It's barely nothing. Barely anything. I could do that all day. I can make clouds all day and play with them. They're so fun. Why is one clouds? About one of Bob's videos, he talks about being clouds all day and then wiping them off your canvas. I wonder what Bob Ross would have said about paint and sip studios. I think he would have liked them. I think he would have thought that was pretty awesome. Bob died in 1995. I did not know him. But I do know people who knew him. Um, heard lots of great stories. All right. Okay. So keep going, touch your mouth a little bit if you need to, and, and I'll, uh, if you are done though, I recommend stopping because here's the thing when you're a painter, when, you, uh, when you're painting, if it's 80% good, not going to get a lot better and you could mess up what the 80% that you already have. So when it's 80% good, put your brushes in the water, get a beverage and relax, okay? That's what I recommend. Make sure the forms are wiggly. Don't have a line um, that's you know dividing your uh, mountain in half exactly. Uh, that's what I'm trying to avoid here. I'm deliberately trying to mess up my lines a little bit. I don't want it to be like a dividing line. That that just doesn't look good. You want it to be wiggly and curvy because in real mountains there are all these peaks and valleys and bridges and nothing, nothing is perfect. If you make it perfect, it won't look real. Or it's nowhere near, near real. Let's see, I can make less of a mistake now by spreading a little bit of it out. Wow. The gray, a little less of a just motion a little bit of that gray near the bottom and it won't look as
height. By the time we put in our trees and our grass and our palm vines, we won't even notice these mountains. We'll just, we'll just notice you. We won't even notice all the wiggles and squiggles and bumps. So just go, oh, that's a pretty thing. Just like going on. Keep it messy, keep it messy. Perfection is the enemy of art, okay? Don't be a perfectionist. If you make your mountains and your clouds and your trees and your skies and your flowers perfect, then it'll look like Disney World. And Disney World is fun. That's not, it doesn't look real. All right. Raise your hand if you need more time. Got it. All right. No problem. I'm just going to sit and drink my wine and relax after that uncharged home thing. Is anyone celebrating anything tonight? If you are, will you unmute and let me know? No celebration? So celebrating it's Saturday. Celebrating uh, it's Saturday. Let's see. I can't hear. I see someone talking, but I can't hear them. Unmuted. You can tell me in chat if you want. Ah, I love it. It's Saturday. It's Saturday. That's a great reason to, to celebrate. Here's to Saturday. I was talking to one of my staff members today about, you know, how to decide when to reopen. And that's really a tough call for small business owners like us. Um, because when you're closed for three months, you're really, really, really broke. Uh, but on the other hand, when you care about your staff and your family and your customers and, and their families, it's a hard call because none of us want to uh, expose anyone else to an illness or be exposed to illness. Um, where was I going? Oh yeah, celebrating. And what we decided in our call was, it, it doesn't matter. At the, end, at the end of the day, at the end of our lives, we're not gonna remember if we open beginning of June, beginning of July, it doesn't matter the day. All that's gonna matter is that we survived it and that we're safe and healthy and our families are safe and healthy and the people we love are still in our lives, despite all of the stress and the struggle in our times. And as a staff, we're really grateful that our customers are, are still showing up to our free Zoom classes and letting us know that you haven't forgotten about us. And I'm grateful to my staff, to my family. And even though uh, these are stressful times and arguments are more likely to happen during this time, Hopefully we're not the only family going through that. But uh, at the end of the day, all we have is each other. So here's to you, here's to your families, here's to friendship and community. Here. It's really too bad, but it is what it is. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, 
But I, I stay at home. I stay at home. I just, I, I just, I can't get. I mean, I'm good one on one with friends. When we go walking. I can't do social things. I'm actually painting now. Painting. If you're ahead of the game and just waiting. If you have a little bit of that gray left. And you can add a little more texture in your mountains, just two little lines of gray and little pockets on yeah. the right side. And that just maybe those are bear dens, maybe that's a forest. I don't know, just some squiggles and lines. Just kind of something different on each one. Not routine, not kind of not not symmetrical, not just kind of random, what I'm trying to say. And that will create even more texture in your mind, which is kind of fun. But that's just if you are waiting for everyone you have time. All right, so I think what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to get started on the bottom. And if you're still looking at your mom, no problem, it's okay. Because the next part's going to be easy. And we'll take a while. So I'll just go ahead and show you that. If you're not caught up, that's okay. Just walk. All right. I want to show you how to mix your paint. The sample paint has phthalo green. Phthalo green is a cool green. And what I mean by that is it has blue in it. Okay. So it's more green of a blue, if that makes sense. It's a greenish blue. It's kind of like the color of our Colorado blue spruce trees. It's um, if, if you add a lot of white, you get teal. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, sort of like an evergreen, I guess. Um, so anyway, the way I'm going to get that particular shade of blue is I'm just going to add, I'm going to first take a scoop with my big brush, I'm gonna put it on my plate somewhere, and then I'm going to add just the tiniest amount from the side of my brush. Don't go right in the middle of your yellow. Just go off to the side. Take it from the side. Take it from the side so you don't contaminate all of it. So we're just going to put a little yellow and I'm going to mix it in with that blue. And I'm going to get a green that is not any green. In other words, it's not the greenest green. It's got a little blue in it. It's a little darker because it has more blue. I hope that makes sense. And that is how we approximate phthalo blue. When we do our Zoom classes, we're using just the primary colors. I think it's worthwhile to learn to mix. Okay, so that's a green. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but it's a dark, mostly blue green. And what I'm going to do with that green is I'm going to take that big brush and from that green, and the number of horizon line, I'm going to make grass with it. Sometimes I'm going to hold my brush this way, up and down. Uh, so it's, so it's more like a knife blade. Sometimes I'm going to do it that way. I want to vary these strokes a little bit. Do it that way. I'm, I'm sticking below the horizon line. I'm going to do a bunch of those that way. And then I'm going to add, to do it in three steps. I'm going to add a tiny bit more yellow to that. So I get a new shade of green, a little brighter. And then I'm going to turn my, I'm going to still do it that way after the those lines. But I want it to be a little brighter now. This is how you touch. And I'm going to dab on some in those white areas that are a little bright. They're made brighter because they have yellow. And I'm going to do a bunch of those. I'm still going to make some white spots. I'm not going to fill in all the white spots. By adding different shades of green to create texture and more of a three dimensional look. And these are just dabs. They're about, I'm just tapping the brush with that color and pulling down about one inch. Make that shape. Make that shape. Okay? So I've got the more blue green and I've got the more yellow green. And then I told you there'd be three steps, and that's okay. 
don't worry. We're just using three different shades of green. As long as you have three different shades, it doesn't matter if they match my green. So I'm going to pick up some more blue for my third shade. And this time, it's going to be far more blue than green. If you don't remember how any of it goes, it doesn't matter. You just want three different shades of green. And you get those by adding blue or adding yellow. More blue or more yellow. But when you make green, it's always blue and yellow. You add more yellow, you get a different, you get kind of an avocado. Ooh, add more blue, you get more of a evergreen. Colorado blue spruce. You add equal amounts, you get more of a Kelly green than fresh. So as long as you have three different shades of green, that's all we're doing. We're poking and popping with those three different shades because I want texture. And I'm going to just keep dabbing in until the white spots are filled. I'm not going to go back and forth. I'm not going to crisscross. I'm doing that dabbing motion, a vertical motion, pulling down about an inch or so. And maybe half an inch, like that. An inch is from one knuckle to the next on your finger. So it's not an inch. And because we have those three shades of green, we're getting texture. It's not a flat. It's not like I went like this with one shade of green. One more natural. I'm also going to paint the sides of my canvas. And the reason I do that is because if you paint the sides and the top and the bottom as you go, then you don't have to put it in the frame. That is technically called a gallery wrap. And that's a good way to do it. It's saving money on having to buy a frame. If you have some white spots in there, this is you. That's fine. That's cool. Leave them just, just a little bit. Why not? That just adds some highlight and variety and variability in your uh, foliage. Cool. That almost looks like a forest, doesn't it? Like Pixie Forest. And this looks kind of like mist. Some big in that. That's a hippie word. I think I like it. All right, I'm going to make sure that that line's not too straight. Make sure it's never straight. So I can add a little bit of variability to that line. I don't want a straight and right line. I want some bumps. Just like there might be foothills in there. I'm just tapping on, making sure that horizon line is not too flat. Up on the side, the direction your eyes towards what you want to focus on. I like that. I like that a lot better to have a little, little bumpiness in that horizon line. I was telling you, this is not about Ross painting because this is acrylic, but it sure looks like one so far, doesn't it? Similar composition. Feel free to unmute yourself. If you have any questions, okay? Can 
you know, if you put a bird in this sky right now, you would have a pretty nice completed painting. But we're gonna make it even more beautiful with some pine trees and flowers. This is one that you're gonna to wanna to hang up in your house and be really proud of. Whatever you do, don't blend all those trees to the same green. You want three different shades of green. Mine is really messy looking up close. From a distance, it looks like a forest, but up close, it looks like a classroom of preschoolers wipe their fingers on it. That's but you want that contrast by making three shades. Anytime you're painting with nature, if you want to make something look three-dimensional, if you have three different shades of color in the same object, you can make it pop. If you have you know, your base color, your medium color, and then a shade lighter and a shade darker, add a little white or yellow to make it lighter, add a little black to make it darker, and you can paint anything and make it look three dimensional if you try that. But this time we just use yellow and blue, different shades. If you concentrate a little bit more of that blue color toward the back, that makes those trees in the back look even farther away. Because our eyes see things that are far away as more blue. So anytime you're painting a landscape, like something outside, if you add more blue to it, that makes it look far away. Our eyes do that. Clouds look blue if they're far away. The ocean looks blue because what you're seeing is far away. Mountains look blue or purple, blue or purple blue, because they're far away. So you'll notice when I now that I've added some blue for those far away hills, the background, that looks deeper. That, see how dark that is? That's just blue. I just added more blue to my green, and now those look farther away. If I want things to look closer up, I do the opposite. I Okay, so it's cool colors. Cool colors are green, blue, black, purple. So colors that you look at make you feel cool. If you have those in your painting, things look farther away. But if you add yellow, orange, red, brown, those are the warm colors. If you add more of those to your painting in the front, then this looks closer. I'm giving you all kinds of tips that I teach my Bob Ross class. You're getting them for free, so that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? See how these look closer? Because they have a little more yellow. Those look 
farther because they have a little more blue. Now, if I've confused the heck out of you, if you're a beginning beginner and you can't keep track, just paint that bottom green and don't worry about it. But for you advanced painters, these little tips about how to make things feel closer or feel farther, those are some advanced tips that you might be ready for. So I had a little more yellow showing in the front here. See, looks, looks closer. Cool how that works. I'm liking this painting. Hope you're liking your painting. <laughs> this is far more complicated than the original. I think I'm teaching a Bob Ross class because I miss it. Anyway, stop adding paint to your uh, foreground. If, you, if it's filled in enough, put your brushes in the water and walk away because we have to let this dry. We just have to let it dry before we put on our trees. So if it's filled in with green, it doesn't have to be perfect, leave it alone. Put your brushes in the water, walk away, and let's give it five minutes, okay? So you have a five minute break. Now I can't see the people who, uh, who have their cameras off, but I'm telling you, if you keep painting that green after it's filled in, it's not going to be dry by the time I start on the trees. So you do want to let that dry, okay? And the more you play with it, the more blended it's going to become, and you don't want to blend it. Friends don't let friends over blend. <laughs> Okay, stop. So five minutes, get up, walk around the room. Here's my philosophy about painting. When you're painting a landscape, if you look at it a really long time, you're probably gonna be hard on yourself. You're gonna see its imperfections. It's like raising teenagers. Teenagers have told me it's like living with parents. If you're around them, oh, it's like the pandemic quarantine, right? If you're around them all the time, you see their flaws. But when you go out and you take a walk in the fresh air and you come back, suddenly they look a little more beautiful. Painting's the same way. So I recommend putting your brushes in the water, get up, walk around the house a bit, get a beverage, take a bathroom break, whatever you need, and then come back to it. And you'll be even more impressed with your beautiful painting. So however long that break is, make sure you at least get up and move around a little bit. You you also can't really see it from two feet in front of it. You're painting just a couple of feet in front of your painting. No one's going to be putting their nose in it on their wall like that. They're going to be looking at it from across the room, 10 to 15 feet away. They're not going to see the imperfections and they're going to think you're a genius. So get up, look at it from 15 feet away and see what other people see or 10 feet away. However big your space is. Mine looks better on the camera than it really is in person. Because I've got about three feet here and then three feet in, you know. Uh, so it's almost like you're looking at it from six feet away. It looks better farther away than close up. Because I'm taping this for YouTube, I just want to reiterate, if you have your camera on at the end and you 
touch on your painting, it will be video. I hope that you'll be brave enough to do that. Um, uh, but for now, I just have it on spotlight view, which means that people can just see it. Anyone want to see a magic trick? Okay, I'm going to show you a magic trick, okay? All right. So see how this mountain, this mountain side is in front of this mountain? See that? This mountain is in front of this mountain. See that? All right. When you're painting, you get to play God. You don't get to do that anywhere else in life, but when you're painting, you can move mountains. That's fine. That's fine. So if I want to push this mountain in front of that mountain, real easy to do with a little gray paint. Just a little gray paint. Okay. A little gray paint. And I can go. Bye bye. Let's see here. Let's see. Hold on. I can say bye bye. Now you're in the back. Sorry, you were pushing too much. You don't get to do that anywhere else in life. When you're painting, you get to play God. And you get to create mountains and put them in the front or in the back, wherever you decide. And man, I just love that about painting. I actually really like the little ones. They're kind of the underdogs. I could let that dry. And if I let it dry and put a little more white down here, then I push that one back. Anyway, it's kind of fun. Fun little magic trick. I can put this, push this mountain behind this one. There's another magic trick. Oops, all right, I just pushed them back. They're fighting to be first in line. That girl is so exciting. All the kids always find magic tricks. around with my mountains changing the shape and form but I'm leaving this alone because I want it to be dry. We're going to get started in about a minute so I'm just giving you a warning. If we were at my studio right now there would be music playing. It's so weird to paint without music. But the reason I do it is when I put this on YouTube, they don't like like uh, other people's music playing because it's going to create copyright violations. So we don't put on music when we're doing these. All right, guys, we're going to get started. I'm going to show you how to make some happy trees. Okay, I'm done fussing with my mountains, having fun with those. Now I'm going to show you, I'm going to do happy trees in two different ways. These are small trees. These are not big trees. They're going to go right in the front of the mountains. So I'm going to use 
I can use one of two brushes. I'm going to show you both ways. This is my small brush, small brush. Hopefully you can see it. It's called a small round, okay? I also have a fan brush. Now, if you purchase a kit from us, you've got a small, medium, and large brush, a large, medium, flat, and a small round. But if you are in a kit slot and you happen to have a fan brush, they look like this, they look like a rake. And if um, or a fan. I'm going to show you both ways. You're going to get your money's worth out of this one, believe me. All right, I'm going to show you both ways. First, I'm going to show you with the small brush. Okay? So, we're going to do these trees in black. I'm going to take my small brush. I'm going to chisel it on my painting. What I mean by chisel is I'm pulling down and twisting. I, I put my paint in the black paint, put my brush in the black paint, and then I'm pulling down and twisting and I'm wiping off any globs. I'm doing it gently, but it's also chiseling my brush into a finer point. That's what I'm trying to do here. Okay. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Gives me a little finer point. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, watch carefully, I'm gonna do a pine tree right here. I'm gonna tap on, this is kind of a tap and drag, a trunk. I didn't pull down a straight line. Notice how bumpy it is. It's because a tree trunk is never perfectly straight. People say, I can't paint because I can't paint a straight line. We don't paint straight lines. And then I'm just gonna tap on little branches off to the side. And as I go, a, a pine tree has branches that get longer as you go down. I'm kind of zigzagging back and forth, but I'm not connecting my branches because I don't want it to look like a true zigzag. I'm just alternating the sides and pulling down from that top. I'm pulling down and out so that the lower branches are wider. And if you have spaces from the trunk, that's okay, no problem. Make sure that the point at the top of your tree because your eyes think if they see a point the pine tree. Leave spaces in between each branch. That's where your birds fly through and build their nests. If you have your branches too close together, then your birds will go into that like a brick wall and they'll fall and die and you'll have to clean it up. I always say it'll be all over my studio floor, but since you're home, you'll have to clean it up at home. Don't do that to the birds, okay? Leave spaces between your branches to secure the nest. But you also want enough branches that it doesn't look like a ladder. I'm going to do that again for those who might have missed it. I'm chiseling my tiny brush on the side of my plate. I'm going to put another tree right here. I'm taking advantage of where the space is for the trees in my mountains. I made a bumpy, I tapped in a bumpy trunk. I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to drop down a little bit so my top of my tree has a point. And then at the top, I'm just going to put a little baby branch. I'm going to drop down a little bit more and a little longer. This is kind of a little longer. Can we mute the music? It's really hard to hear the instructions. It looked like some bear climbed up there and broke a branch. They don't have to be the same number of branches on both sides. In fact, if you don't have the same number of branches on both sides, it'll look more natural. So let's say there's a little gap there because some of the bears were playing one day when they broke off the branch. Always make sure there's that point. You can see the difference. If this doesn't have a point, it looks like a bottle brush. If, <laughs> I don't know if anyone knows what a bottle brush is. Um, whatever. But if you put a little point at the top, then suddenly you're like, ah, oh, pine tree, I get it. It's a pine tree. So I've got two. I'm going to put in a bunch of them, and here's the thing. Just like the mountains, don't make any of them the same height as another. Make some taller, some shorter, some fatter, some thinner. 
They're just like people. Think of them like people. Think of your friends. They're not all the same width or height or shape. They might be starting down in here. They might not be even starting that up high on the horizon. They might be starting a little lower. But just remember, make them all different. Just like your friends are different. Just like you're different. Make them all a little bit different. Tap in that. Tap in that trunk and then tap in the branches. Tap them in. Not exactly the same number on each side. And some might overlap a little with the other. There might be a gap. Make it irregular. Make it not perfect. And then here's another thing. When you're painting a pine tree, you want to make sure to bring those little branches all the way down to the bottom. Okay, and the reason for that is in a city park or on your lawn, people remove those branches off the bottom so they can get a lawnmower under there. Or, or maybe it's like a Christmas tree. Everyone knows what a Christmas tree looks like. They remove the bottom branches so you can cut it down. But if you're out in the woods, those branches are basically resting on the forest floor. So don't put a stump. Don't put a line down below indicating the trunk where the branches are because that just won't look natural. All right, each time I'm chiseling my brush again, I'm tapping on the trunk, I'm putting little tiny baby branches on the top, tapping them in, tapping them in, tapping them in. This is kind of messy, and that's okay. Don't make them perfect, that's fine. But what you do want to make sure is that they have a triangular shape, that the top branches are shorter, not as wide as than the bottom. The bottom is the widest part. You don't want the tree to fall over. You also want to make sure there's spaces between your branches so the birds can fly in and build a nest. You don't want a big black triangle there. And you want enough space, enough branches so that you don't see the trunk well, for starters, and it doesn't look like a leg. So if it's a little like a ladder, just fill in some more branches in between. Also put a little more taps over the trunk. And the reason, I'll tell you why. When you're looking at, a, at one of these trees, there are branches coming out to the front, there are branches coming out to one side, branches coming out to the other side, branches behind you, right? When you're looking at it head on, you're only seeing the ones that are sticking out side to side. So to paint the ones that are sticking out front to back, you just tap over that trunk a little bit. Just kind of randomly tap over the trunk, adding a little fullness over your trunk, and then you don't see the trunk so much. I didn't fill it all in, but I just had a little more fullness over the trunk. And that tells my eye, oh, that's a three-dimensional tree. All right, I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm going to keep doing the same thing. And then I am going to show you one with a hand brush for those who have a hand brush on the arm. You're getting all kinds of crazy, pretty advice here. I love that. Advice I only give my Bob Ross students. All right, so for those of you who do have a fan brush, I'm going to show you how to use that. Most of you I don't expect will have a fan brush laying around, but I'm going to show you if you want to see. So here's my fan brush. The rest of you can ignore me and just paint more trees. And make sure you put them different um, spaces apart, different heights, okay, and different widths. So if you're using a fan brush, I'm just going to show you how. I'm going to wipe it on my, through my black, flip it over. I love fan brushes. And if you're investing in your own paints and brushes, get a fan brush. There's so much you can do with a fan brush. You can Google how to use a fan brush too. I love them. They're great for animal fur. They're great for grass. They're great for pine trees. I think my favorite brush is a fan brush. All right, some people don't like them. I don't know why I don't get it, but whatever. Some people don't like ice cream either. All right, so here's how I'm gonna make a tree with a fan brush. Um, let's see, where do I want to look for tree? I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put it in a weird spot, guys. I'm gonna put one 
All right, it's gonna be tall. So I popped on my trunk. I'm gonna drop down a half an inch. And then with the corner, see how I'm holding my hand right? With just the corner, I'm gonna tap on back and forth, zigzagging, but I'll be zigzagging to the point. I don't want to look like real zigzag. Same thing as I did with my small brush, but this time I'm using a fan brush. Now as I get farther down that tree, Notice how my brush is rotating because I'm using more of that brush as the tree gets bigger. And my branches need to get bigger. So these two trees overlap and there's nothing wrong with that. Because in a real forest, they overlap. In fact, I might put a tall one back over here and I'm just going to do one side of it. There's my hand brush tree. Messy. Messy problem. And then Drop down and half an inch, I'm using just the corner of my hand. And I go back and forth. I'm making them come out a little farther each one. Now, the reason why this tree is so tall off to the side, it creates a frame. It creates a frame for my painting. What I mean is, when you have tall things on the side, it directs your eye to the middle. That's kind of a fun trick. So I'll put one over here too. It's only half a tree. I'm using just the corner of the brush at first. And as it gets bigger, my brush starts to rotate. Now this is okay. Go this way. I just swallowed up that little tree, but that's all right. Maybe it's a mom and a baby hiding under a skirt. All right. See how nice having two tall trees on the side really frame in the painting? Yeah. This doesn't look like the original, but they're learning some advanced techniques here. Ooh, ah, uh, okay. Now, I'm going to put another hand brush tree right here, a little baby bed. My fan brush has a curve to it, so I can play with the hair a little bit. But since it has a curve, I have to be careful. It's, it's not going to make a real thin line. Every fan brush has its own little works. Just like the others, that one was made with a fan brush. All right, I'm going to do another one over there. You guys just keep filling them in, make sure they're different sizes, different heights, different widths, and different spacing apart. Now, I'm tempted to put another one right there, but you know what? If I did, I wouldn't look real natural. If you want to just put the tiniest little baby one in there, maybe that'll work. Tiny baby. But I don't want to, I don't want to make it look like coral fences. I feel it's kind of that way. All right, there you go. That taller on the sides, I got a variety in the middle, frames it. You can put in one tree, you can put in three trees, you can put in five trees, you can put in seven trees. I don't really care. Don't make them symmetrical. You don't want them to look like a fence or a row of trees that are fake. You don't want them to look like Disney World. Different heights, different widths, different spacing will make it look more natural. Now, this painting looks a lot more like a Bob Ross painting than the original, so sorry about that. Or maybe you like that. So I'm going to let this dry. And the reason I'm going to let it dry, I'm going to take a five-minute break. I'm going to let those... Maybe you'll need 10 if you're still working on your trees. But I need them to dry because I don't want to take any chance that my beautiful pastel purple columbine flowers are going to have black. So I want to make sure that's good and dry and I'm not picking up any black paint when I put in those pretty little flowers. Okay. All we have left are flowers. Flowers have a little bit of detail in them, but it won't be bad. You guys are doing fantastic, I'm sure. So if you want to get up and change your water, this is a good time to change your water after you put in your trees. Clean your brushes and then get some more water. Let's give you 10 minutes, okay? You're going to finish your trees, you're going to clean your water, and you're going to come back ready, ready with a dry, hopefully dry painting to put some flowers in the foreground.
All right, now I'm not gonna start. I just wanna tell you something. Now that we're three quarters of the way into this painting, you picked a hard one. But I love this painting. It's one of my most popular ones. So however it looks, just hang in there. Hang in there. The focal point's gonna be those three big flowers in the front. And no one will even notice if you made any mistakes in the back. So don't worry about a thing, okay? All right. I'll give you more time, it's okay. All right, so if you're struggling, here's what we can do. I can't come to your house and help you, but what I can do is if you're struggling, oh, I've got some questions in chat. Yay, okay. Did you get a fan brush with the kit? No, we don't, we don't put the fan brushes in the kit. Brushes are really expensive. In fact, those brushes that you have, if you were to buy those new, that's about $20 worth of brushes. So we are using up our old ones um, and putting those in the kit right now. So you, you got one that's been loved. Um, when we run out of those, we're gonna have to put cheaper brushes in the kit. Um, and we're just doing a small, medium, and large because um, those are pretty decent brushes actually. All right, 
could we please turn off the music? It's hard to hear the instructions. I don't hear any music at all. So I'm a little confused about who's got music playing. If you are not muted and you have music playing, will you please mute yourself? Oh, it says they turned it off. Perfect, thank you. It might have been me humming. If, that, if you heard a painful noise at some point, it might have been me humming. Sorry. If you have any other questions you need help, I won't call you out by name. Just, uh, just show me something in the text and uh, then I will go and look at your picture and you can hold it up for me to see. Uh, and I can give you tips. I can chat, chat with you. I can type it so nobody's embarrassed. But you will have to hold up your painting. When you ask questions about the class, when you ask questions, you might be asking something that other people also wonder and are too embarrassed to ask. So feel free. All right, so I'm gonna give a new instruction, but this is an easy one and you don't have to be ready for it, okay? So if you're not ready, don't do it. I'm gonna mix a little of my white paint, a little of my yellow paint together so that it's yellow, but it's got some white in it. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the bottom of one of my brushes, doesn't even matter which brush, and I'm poking the stick in that light yellow that I made by mixing a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white together. And all I'm gonna do with that paint on the end of my stick is I'm gonna pop on some dots of yellow and you can twist to make them round. And those are like far away dandelions. Make them smaller, higher up, because then they look farther away. Whether in the front of the painting, make them a little bigger and then they look closer up. And those are just some little dandelions in the grass. So you don't have to do those, those are optional, but it gives some people something to do if they've already, they're already caught up. You can see they really pop out. When you mix a little white in with your yellow, the yellow pops out. We're just putting little yellow polka dots with the end of our brush, the stick part. Bigger ones in the front, little smaller ones in the back. Those are some dandelions or wildflowers, I don't know what they are. But they just had a little, little prettiness to our painting, and I'm going to let those leave them alone, let them dry. Don't make them too big. You know, another thing that I learned about painting wildflowers like that, I'm going to tell you one more thing. When you're putting those little yellow ones on, Put a few together because you might notice when you go out in your garden, you see dandelions, they grow in clumps. So you might have some clumps and then walk six feet, not see any, and then have another clump because that's where the seeds fall. So clump them, put little clumps together. Any kind of thing, why don't wildflowers put them in clumps? Maybe there's one lone one out there that's kind of sad and lonely, but the other ones give them friends. Random. So maybe one has one, maybe one has five, maybe another one has four, or three together. But some of them should have one. <laughs> Everything reminds me of social distancing during the pandemic. It's kind of like the houses right now. You might have one person alone, you might have four people, and they've gotten to know each other really, really well in the last three months. So just little clumps together. No family. Every family's different. I have a different number of people. Whole family standing by. Different sizes too. Maybe I have a mama and a daddy and a baby and an aunt and whatever. Uncle, friends, you're living whatever. 
different numbers, little dots. Oops. And if you don't want those, don't put them in. That's the optional step. All right. You guys ready to paint some uh, purple flowers or do you need more time on what you've already done? Five more minutes? All right, I'll give you five more minutes. Good time to clean your water jar if you have not done that yet. All right, I'm gonna show the people who are waiting one more um, step that is optional. So if you don't want anything else to do, ignore me. You don't need to know this step. All right, this is the optional advanced step for those who are feeling very brave tonight. I have a little bit of green in the middle. Very, very little paint. I'm gonna take my fan brush or your small brush, depending on how you made fan, those pine trees, it doesn't matter. Clean brush, however you made the pine trees, use the same brush. And on every other branch, just tap on a tiny bit of that brighter green. Just like you did the tree, but not all the way. We still want two thirds of that black to show through. I'm not covering the black. All I'm doing is tapping on a little bit of a lighter color, a little green on some of it. And that makes my branches stick out a little bit more. It's hard to see from where you are, and I apologize for that. Once I get it all on, I'll try to bring my um, light up, my canvas up closer, okay? I'm just adding a little bit of highlights. You can do it with a fan brush, you can do it with your small brush, but however you did your original trees, use the same brush and just pop on a little tiny bit of that brighter green on top of the black, but don't cover your black. You need the dark to see the light. You need to have both of those and mostly the black showing. And I'm gonna to try to get closer and hope you can see it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, hold it steady. Let's see, the lighting here is a little goofy. Can you see that a little bit? There's just a little bit of highlights on some of those trees by just tapping on a little bit of color in the same way on some of the trees, maybe every other one. I hope you can see that those trees have a little bit of a different shade in them. It's just taking a, a little green, popping it over in some of the areas of those pine trees. That's the advanced step. You can leave them black, that's fine, and it'll look, the painting will look great. But if someone's waiting and they just want an advanced step, that's something you can try. This is my Bob Ross. And it didn't work if I don't stand up, so I'm just gonna stand up and walk you. Okay, it's been about five minutes, so I'm gonna get started. So gather your things, make sure your brushes are clean. They don't have to be perfectly clean, but just make sure that you can get them mostly clean. Cleaner the better. Because we're gonna be putting in some bright, I think it's like a periwinkle color. I don't know, it's like a bluish lavender. It's really pretty. And those are our pollen vines. So get your brushes clean, wipe it off. I'm gonna take my small brush. Small brush. All right, now I'm gonna use the rest of my blue and I'm going to take a scoop or two with my small brush and make sure there's no yellow. Don't pick up any yellow because we want purple, not green. All right, I put some white in my blue. I'm mixing some white in my blue. I'm gonna go for a smaller, sorry, a paler blue, a 
a lighter blue. If you have any yellow in your blue, avoid that area because you want this to be just blue, a light blue. Oops, can't see it, there you go. All right, and then take a ladybug of your red, just a little, and mix that in too. And hopefully that's gonna give you something that's like a light blue with a hint of purple in it. That's what we're going for. Make sure you don't pick up any black, you don't pick up any yellow, just be careful here because I know our pinks, pinks are all over the place, kind of messy. Try for just the blue. Just the blue with some white in it. And a ladybug or two. If, if you, that's not enough purple for you, add another ladybug of red. But only go small, go, go little bits, because that red is powerful. All right. And I don't want it to, depending on the kind of red, it might look a little gray and we don't want it to be too gray. So I have blue, a scoop of white and a tiny bit of, tiny bit of um, red. And then we're going for like a bluish lavender. All right, now what I'm gonna do, there's three flowers in this painting. They're all different sizes. The one on the left is the biggest. So watch carefully how I make this shape, okay? First, I'm gonna put, I have that blue color, I'm gonna put a dot at the top. Find that space that's not on top of your yellow, put a dot. This is hard to see, so I'm gonna go in with some more white. You don't have to use white, but as long as you can see it, there's some white. Then I'm gonna come down, and instead of straight down, don't go straight down from your white dot. Here's my dot. Now I want you to come out to one side. So we're gonna make like a tall pyramid with our three dots. I'm hoping you can see one, two, three. See that? One, two, three. One, two, three, okay? Now, it's hard to see because my dandelions are so bright, but stay with me. Here's a fourth dot over here. And here's a fifth dot over here. Okay, what I've made, and it's kind of hard to see, so I'll just show you. It's almost like a star. If you can draw a star, you can draw a star. Well, lots of people don't know how to draw a star. So it's five dots in the shape. It's going to be like a star. Okay. But if you don't know how to draw a star, star one dot, two dot, three dot, four dot, five dot. Okay. Right. Then I'm going to do another one. I'm going to do. I'm going to do my big one over here. I'm going to do one, two. So these should be big enough that you can really see. Them. Three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And you can make them into a star. If that's easier for you. That's all right. We're going to fix them so they don't look like a star. And I'm going to do one more that's smaller in the center. I don't want any of these to be the same size. Okay? So one, two, three, four, five. We're not going to make stars for the other part, but that's how you get your shape on it. All right, so you should have three different size stars. You can do them in white because we're going to cover them over in purple anyway. And if they pick up a little of those yellow dots, it doesn't matter. Okay, but make sure you have that lavender color mix. It's mostly blue with some white and a little red. All right, hopefully you've got your stars on there. If not, I'm gonna go ahead and show the next step and then if, if you're not ready, it's okay, you can review. So I'm gonna start with one of those dots and I'm gonna curve out and come down. Start with a dot, curve out, and come down. So then, it's this shape. It's like a Hershey's kiss. Boop, to the Hershey's kiss shape. I'm going to do the same thing from this dot, like a Hershey's kiss. And this is with lavender. If it mixes with your white, no problem. No problem. 
each one, I'm going to start from that dot and I'm going to make a Hershey's kiss. So just pull it into the center. From this dot, curve it out, make a Hershey's kiss. This is going to take a little yellow. Great thing about acrylic paint, you can let it dry and then go over it and get layers of paint and each one covers the one underneath. Alright. If you kiss from the dot and fill it in. Like that. Okay, dot, curve out, curve out, fill it. Dot, curve out, curve out, fill it. Dot, curve out, curve out, fill it. All right, do me a favor, and if you or on your video, give me a thumbs up if this technique makes sense to you. Perfect, thank you. From the dot, dot at the end, curve out, grab the other side, fill it. Make sure that end is pointy. Like a Hershey's kiss has a point. Make sure it has a point. Put your pine tree here point. The tips of your Columbine cards will point. This is like the shape of a starfish. Do you notice that? It's like a starfish, except a little curvier. And then when you're done, put your brush in the water and let's let those dry a minute. And we are almost done with this painting. I'm getting really excited about it. But we're gonna let those three bottom layers of our flowers dry. You'll know when something's dry if it's shiny, if it's not shiny. If you look at it from different angles and it shimmers, if it's shiny, that means it's still wet. Another way, if you know it, you'll know if it's wet, is if you rub it on the person next to you, but then they'll probably never talk to you again. And if we go in quarantine again, you're really gonna regret that. Just look and see if it's shiny, okay? It's shiny, it's still wet. We wanna leave it alone and let it dry as long as you can. As long as you have decent coverage, leave it alone. You've seen some area where I'd be able to take it over. Fix that, but then I'm going to leave it on. You need to let this dry. Cover up the yellow that put this little head in there. It's really neglected. All right, I'm going to put my brush in the water and let it dry. And mine, as it dries, it's getting lighter. You can, uh, there's a couple ways, there's a few ways you can dry things off. You can put them in front of a fan. You've got a, handy, a fan handy, or you can take it a blow dryer. But my favorite way and the easiest way is just do this. Get up, dance around the room, wave your painting, Colorado air is so dry that it'll be dry in no time if you just wave it around. It can't be drippy when you do that. 
you don't want really wet paint when you do that, but very rare that I would have wet, wet paint. So if I just wave it around, it's getting dry pretty fast. And it's fun. It's fun to wave it around. We're going to be using white paint next. So hopefully you have a little bit of white paint left. Kind of funny, one time I was painting and I brought my painting home. This was when I first started and I didn't own a studio. Um, <laughs> I brought my painting home and I didn't have any white paint and I had to fix something. So I took out a bottle of correcting fluid, the white, white stuff that you, if you make a mistake when you write out an envelope, <laughs> I finished my painting with correcting fluid. I was, that was pretty silly, but if you're in a pinch, that works. If you don't have any more white, you can let this dry completely and do the next step in yellow, but you know what? It's gonna look a lot better in white. Um, but I know sometimes, sometimes we forget to leave a little of each color when we're mixing. I've done that many times. And another thing you could do is, uh, if you ran out of white, is you could also do the next step. Um, skip the next step and then just do the center flowers in black and yellow and that'll work too. But anyway, we're going to do the next step in white. Hopefully we saved a little white. Or very pale blue. That would also work. All right. So mine is still not wet. I don't know about you. It's still not dry. I don't know about you. But I'm putting it in front of a little fan here. All right, so what do you guys think of the class so far? We're almost done. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Nice, good, awesome. Now, if you're still painting those purple flowers, you got to give them a chance to dry because when we put on our white, it'll smear. So don't be a perfectionist. Once you get them on there, leave it alone. Put your brushes in the water, leave it alone. In my Bob Ross classes, I like to say, step away from your painting, please. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about our studio while we're waiting for those flowers to dry. Uh, so, when it's not pandemic season, and we're not doing all Zoom classes, we do classes about 10, 12, 14 times a week, depends. Um, we do private events here, so if you want to just have your family come in, uh, we can, right now during the pandemic, we can have up to 10 painters in here. So if you say, you know what, I'm really really miss my best friends and I want to see them, we can socially distance you apart and we could do a class up to 10 people. So uh, if you want to do that, just shoot us an email on our website and we can arrange a private event for you. Uh, and you'd have a place for yourself. Um, so so uh, normally we, uh, you know, when we're not concerned about that kind of thing, we do about 10, 12 or more classes a week and we're going to gradually rebuild to that as soon as we open, we do Bob Ross classes, we do paint your pet, we do uh, watercolor workshops, and um, we sometimes paint on wood. At Christmas time, we're gonna be painting ornaments. That's really gonna be fun. I actually have the ornaments already in my garage because I got them on a good sale. So uh, I'm excited about that. We're gonna do some pour painting inside of clear ornaments, and I'm super excited about that. Uh, so we have all kinds of things coming up. I normally, when our, um, my painting's still drying, so I'll keep telling you this. We also are selling face masks right now. I have studio hours on the website. It's three to six every uh, Monday through Friday that I'm here. And you can come in and buy face masks. I have some hand-painted face masks. I'll show you those. Let me put my painting back. I'm going to show you 
the face masks we have for sale. We have several different kinds of face masks for sale. We have our sipping and painting ones. These are non-hand painted. Oh, look, it's upside down and backward. Um, <laughs> these are $3. They're black, three-ply cotton, cool in the summer. We have these ones that you see in doctor's offices. These are $2. We have three-ply white plain masks. These are $5 each. And everything we make, of course, is helping us keep our studio from folding, which is really scary for small businesses right now. So we appreciate you buying your masks from us. These are the hand painted ones. They're Monet inspired. It's kind of hard to see the colors. It looks just blue on the screen, but these have some green in them. There's some green, a little bit of pink. They're Monet inspired tie dye with Monet kind of colors. And these are $7 each. They're three ply cotton, washable. $7 each or three for $15. I've seen them on Facebook and online. Tie dye, three ply cotton masks for $20 each. These are three for 15. So if you wanna buy some masks, come in and see me three to six during the week. 10 to three on Sundays, Saturdays and Sunday. All right, let's see if our paintings dry yet. Almost, all right. One last thing I'll tell you, and then we're going to go in and we're going to put our next color on. Next thing I want to tell you, I'm the owner here at Sipping and Painting Hamden. Uh, before we broke for the pandemic, we had about seven teachers. I think we'll have about five of them coming back, hopefully. Um, and every time they do a Zoom class, they are volunteering. Their classes are free, they're volunteering. And we're doing it because it's a public service to our customers. We want you to be around when we reopen. And that's why we're doing this. Um, so please tell all your friends that we're doing three classes in June, um, all month long, and get more people to sign up. If you would, that'd be great. And then when you do take classes from some of those teachers, give them a tip. I don't have a Venmo address up, because I don't do Venmo, I'm old. Um, but if you would do that for me, if you would get more people to come back to, your, to our classes, that'd be awesome. Just tell them they're all free. And then, uh, then the last thing I ask is we do have all of our June classes are being recorded and put on YouTube. So spread the word, let people know they can take, they can do any of the paintings on YouTube for free as well. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking and I'm gonna start painting. Make sure your brushes are clean, your baby brush. We're gonna do our baby brush now. Make sure it's clean. All right. Squishy like a fishy in my water jar. Nice and clean baby brush. Good. Now, remember I told you we're going to use our white paint? I'm going to go into my white paint with my baby brush. I'm just going to pick up white. We're going to do the same thing with that we did with our purple. We're going to do it in white, but we're not going to do it right over the purple. It's going to be like we twisted it a little bit, like a pinwheel. So I'm going to put the dot, this white dot is going to go in the middle between two of those. Do you see that? And then another white dot in the middle between these two. Another white dot, about just as long, in the middle between these two. Another white dot in the middle between these two. Another white dot in the middle between these two. So in between each one of these pairs, there's a white dot. And then I'm going to do the same thing I did with the purple. I'll start at the dot, and then I'm going to make a Hershey's kiss right to the center. But this time I'm not going to make a flat bottom. I'm going to make a leaf shape with a skinny almond, and it's going to come right down into the center. You can put a dot in the center of your flower if you know where to stop it. So again, not a Hershey's kiss. If you did a Hershey's kiss, it doesn't matter. You can make that work too. There's lots of different species of combines. This one's going to have a leaf shape right in the middle, like master. We're about, we're about, right to the dot in the middle. And I'm going to go around and do that from each dot. So we're about, like curve out, curve about, right to a dot in the middle. Have them all meet in the middle. They're a bunch of friends, haven't seen each other in a long time, they're meeting in the middle. So it's helpful to put that dot right in the middle, a white dot in the middle, so you know where the middle is. Sitting on that perch. All right. Where's the barn dance? 
have more than I learned. All right, so start at that dot, make an aspen leaf or a, whatever that shape is. Like a skinny almond, like an almond on a diet. And they're meeting in the middle. They're having a party in the middle. Shape of a Chinese pea pod. Well, kind of. Kind of, sort of, not really. But I think you get the idea. It's like an eye shape. It's skinny eye. And we have the white flower. Now, if you did a Hershey's kiss and you still could, let me show you the difference. If you want to make this down here a little wider than up here. You can plant it out a little bit more like a Hershey's Kiss. That's a little harder, but it's actually even more Columbine one. So let me show you again. If you just curve it out a little bit more at the base and bring it in, so it's that kind of leaf, it's going to look even more realistic because there's more Columbine to that. I went up to this uh, the Kenan Gardens in Vail, I think it was. Vail or Steamboat Springs? I think maybe Steamboat Springs. Anyway, I can't remember where it was. But they had a ton of different kinds of columbines. I can't believe how many different species of columbines there are. And each one had a slightly different shape. So you can do it like that skinny leaf shape, or you can make it a little wider at the base where they connect. And each one's authentically Columbine, okay? All right, so dot, dot, dot in between these other purple things. You can also make your flowers a little skinnier at the base. I mean skinnier and shorter than the purple. Each, if yours is a little different than mine, it doesn't matter, that's my point. People, there's so many different species of columbine. But what they have in common are these layers of petals. And they're very colorful. So the first layer was our lavender, the second layer is these white. And that's that's why you know it's common. And that's these layers of beautiful, beautiful color. And these columbines, I don't have to tell you, these are fully open and in bloom. You normally wouldn't see them fully open and in bloom. But these are. Because it's art. And why not? But you don't have to paint them fully open and in bloom. Just painting just has them that way. In real life, Probably some would be fully open and in bloom. Some would be half open. So this is easier to paint. And this has been a hard painting. If you have stuck with me the whole time, I am so proud of you. Because this is not an easy painting. Just painted a hard painting and we're almost done. I think this is probably our hardest painting. I used to have teachers complain when I put this one on the calendar. Like, oh man, that's a hard one. I'm never going to get out of here. Once you get your white on, let it dry. We're going to be just putting in some centers. So we have two steps. Actually, we have three steps if you count the signature, but only two little steps left. Woohoo! We're almost done. But let that white dry, it has to be dry. I'm putting this on thin because I do want it to be dry when I can have a nice step. So, no clumps. Get clumps and I'm done.
Did you know that combines are a state flower? Every time I say something like that, I'm like, oh, I better check and make sure, but I'm pretty sure. And they don't grow where it's really hot. I checked when I lived in Southeast Aurora, the front yard that was just baking in the sun every summer. And I could not for the life of me get combine to grow. But then I had some in the shade and those took off. So they don't like things to be too hot. That's why they grow them out in the soil. So if you're going to plant columbines, put them in the shade. Put them where it's not going to get full sun all day. Because they don't like that heat. So uh, let that let those dry. All right. Now what I want you to do with your baby brush, clean it off, get the white off. Then if you have any of that lavender purple left, if you have any blue left, I want you to mix in your rest of your blue. If you don't, that's okay. If you don't have any blue left, that's okay. You can mix in a little bit of black. We just need it to be darker for the inside. I happen to have a little bit of blue left, so I'm mixing that in with the rest of my purple. Again, you could use a little tiny bit of black too. That's fine. We just want it to be a little darker than that purple we had before. All right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put a dark purple dot, or you know, maybe it's black, whatever you have, in the center of each one. And from that, I'm going to start in the dot, always start in the dot. I'm going to flick out. And I'm going to go around and just click. Oops, I'm going to be more careful. I'm going to flick it out. Flick it out. As many or as few as you want. Well, it's kind of like that, but I need to go head on and be more careful. I'm going to chisel my brush, so I'm going to fix that one. Uh, I'm going to chisel my brush to get a little more control. Forgot to chisel. It's good to chisel your baby brush. Chisel, chisel, chisel. All right, now I'm going to be a little more careful. If you have a smaller brush, that would be good. Right. Flick out. Go around. Flick out. Flick out. I'm going to fix that other one. Then I'm going to let it dry and then put some more paint on it. You just want you just want it to flick out like that. Start with the dot. Make sure you chisel your brush if it's small enough for your liking. Flick out. I'm gonna let that dry and fix that one. But you get the idea on these. There's a lot of noise outside my studio right now. That's the part of revving. And if you're near I-25, or if you live near I-25, you know that there's drag racing that goes on frequently in the summer at night. I suspect you're getting ready for that. Once again, I'm gonna I'm gonna fix that one later. Okay, now last step. This is the last step. If you have white left, clean your brush really, really well, and dip it in your white paint. 
And then you go one dot, two dot. Okay, that's still, my purple is still too wet in there. I need to let it dry a minute, but I'm going to show you what this one I was going to fix later anyway. One dot, two dot, three dot, four dot, five dot, something like that. You can have more or fewer, but you just want a few. If you don't have any white left, no problem. Let's see, just use your yellow. And in fact, you can put a little yellow in there anyway, and that's kind of like the pollen on those stamens in the center. So I'm putting some white dots and some yellow dots here. Hard to see, but your white dots and yellow dots on top of that purple center. And that's all, that's the stamens with those little sticks, like filaments that stick out in a flower. And um, you can mix your yellow and white, just put light yellow. I'm doing that and it's working pretty good. You can use yellow, you can use white. If you don't have any more white, you can use black. The, the thing is, is that those stamens and the pollen, they just have to be a different color for contrast. It can't be more blue and purple. They have to have a different color or they won't stick out and look like the inside of a flower. That is the last step. Once you get those little yellow dots on that, is your last step. Woohoo! Except for you got to sign your masterpiece. Sign your masterpiece, and then when you become famous, I'll look at it and I'll go, "Hey, I think I think that person made that with me in my class." So I'll be all proud of you. Proud of you now. You don't have to be famous. If you mess any up, just let it dry and then paint over it with white paint. <laughs> or like I did that time with my white out. That was funny. All right. That is it. I am done. It's hard to see the insides of those flowers, um, but you'll have to trust me on that one. So. The way I sign my brush, my painting is I take my baby brush, I clean it up, and then just take any color that you want and then sign it in the corner. Now Bob Ross, he used to sign his painting in red. So real slow, I'm gonna put my little initials in there if you wanna, anywhere you have room. I don't like to color, cover up my flowers, but I did put my initials down there in red. And that's it. I am done with this painting. Woohoo! You guys picked one of the hardest paintings we have and you nailed it, I'm sure. So what I wanna do is when you're ready, if you, I'm gonna put this on gallery view and when you're ready, what I'd love for you to do is to show me your paintings. Take your time, take your time. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually step away from the camera for a second and I will be right back. So take your time and in about two more minutes, let's, let's just take a look at your paintings and let's do a screenshot, okay? All right, so I'll give you a little bit of time to catch up and finish and I will be right back. I'm gonna look outside and see my clothes are
Here was the original. We used a different shape, different color of blue because we had a different color of blue. And my flowers are bigger. I always paint everything bigger and bolder. That's kind of what I do. Um, <laughs> I grew up in a family of nine kids, so we did everything big. Uh, but similar but different. Yours is going to be different looking too. I just want to show you. Nobody paints the same thing twice. And yours will look different than, than mine. That's good. Oh, hey, guys, I forgot something. I forgot one thing. If you have any glue left, if you do, and you don't have to, add a little yellow to it, or if you just have a little green left, put a little stem coming down from your flower. If you have any green or blue left, just a little, just put a little stem coming down. Coming down below it. Mix up some green first. I'm going to start using my baby brush to do that. Got the stem. Flowers don't float. Except maybe in your world they do. Your world, you do whatever you want. And I'm going to put a little, mix up a little bit of green. Definitely helps. <laughs> I have to be careful if I say dill pickle. Someone's going to put seeds on it. Look at that. It's just a little spiky leaf. That's all I'm saying. Sometimes a little spiky leaf coming up from next to the flower makes it look like there's some leaf action going on back there in the stem. That's all. Just want some stems. Stems or leaves. All right. So, you guys ready to show your paintings? Can you show me your paintings? Yay! Yay! Oh, they're so beautiful! Yay! Oh, I'm so happy and so excited. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh, those are fantastic. Wow, look at these. I'm loving it. I'm so proud of you. Will you hold them there? Hold on a minute while I get a screen snip. It takes me a minute, just a minute, okay? Hold them there. I'm, I, I just have to type in snip and pull it up, and I'm going to do a snip. Uh, hold on. Oh, my gosh. They're so beautiful. Woohoo! All right. Don't move. Don't move. I'm snipping. Yay. I love that so much. Um, oh, my gosh. I'm going to call my file beauty because those are so beautiful. Yay! Oh my gosh, you guys nailed it! Three cheers for you! <laughs> Give yourself a round of applause, you. everybody! Woohoo! Gorgeous! Hi, thank you very okay. much! All right, I'm really, really proud of you. Please post your thank pictures. Thank you. Man, those are amazing. Amazing. Um, post your pictures on Facebook or Instagram or whatever because you should be very proud of what you've just done. Those are beautiful. And if you would, please go to my YouTube channel. Uh, normally, we, I beg for the staff, uh, if they're teaching, I beg for a tip for them. I don't want that. What I would love is if you go to our YouTube channel, check out some of our other classes on YouTube, and then like and subscribe to our page. That would be a huge, wonderful thing. Thank you so much. I'm so proud of you. So proud of you. Thank you. Please um, keep on painting, because you guys are amazing. And 
Uh, thank you for supporting a local family-owned business. I can't wait to paint with you again. Yay, yay for you. All right. Thank I'm gonna you. Sign up. Good night, everybody. Thank you. You're fabulous, and I'm proud of you. Bye. Oh, before I end, did anyone have any other questions or need any other last second help? You can chat with me. Uh, send me a quick chat before I turn it off. If you're stuck, because I can't see everyone. Any last minute sticks? I think we're good. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.